So you've got all these fundraising ideas, but how do you pick the right one? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you five must do things to consider so that you make sure that your fundraiser is right for you. So often there's a question about what to do for your fundraiser and a Google search will reveal that there is so many ideas out there and I don't really think that that's the thing that you need to be focusing on first because it doesn't really matter if you should be doing a quiz night or a morning tea or a lamington driver or a sausage sizzle if you haven't considered these five things first. And uh, so my five things that you must consider when doing your fundraiser are how to get people involved, how to make it easy for those people, what is your return on effort and how to make it simple and easy for yourself and what is going to be the plan. So let's, um, in the next couple of minutes, go over these five steps in a bit more detail. So must do number one is choose something that people will naturally get involved in. Um, you want something that your fundraiser will appeal to a wide audience. Uh, you want to have it so that um, it will appeal to people who aren't personally connect connected to the course. Uh, you want to be making it unique and noteworthy and having it a bit of a standout thing. And you want to make it easy to spread the word for those people. So it needs to be simple enough so that people can go, hey, do you want to do this? And people get it straight away must do um, number two is to not make it tedious or difficult for your supporters because um, it's fine, sure it's fine for you to hand out a um, raffle book and say can you go and sell the tickets but who has to do all the work everyone else except you and it's your fundraiser so that's not really fair on them so what you want to be doing is making it easy and fun for your supporters um, can they pay by credit card think about things like that because who has cash nowadays can they be ordering online? Um, can they share the details easily? Like is it as simple as forwarding on an email to some friends or um, sharing a Facebook button, sharing a Facebook event, that sort of thing? Um, and think about what your social networks and the people that you're connected to already like to do or buy. So if you can pick something um, that sort of ties in your fundraiser with something that they're already doing, you're going to have a lot more chance of success. And um, finally, do they get something in return? Like it's all good and well to say, oh, can I have a donation? Can you give me some money for whatever you're fundraising money for? And that's fine and it will work to a point. But after a while, people are sick of getting an empty feeling in their wallet and they want something in return. So what can you give them in exchange for that? Can you give them a good fun night out? Can you give them a beautiful product? Can you give them something else? other than an empty feeling in their wallet and a must do uh, number three is to understand your return on effort ask yourself how much work is actually going to be involved in this fundraiser how much money is going to be raised and you want to be setting a clear target before you get started so that you know exactly where you're headed um, ask how many and so like say for instance you want to be raising five thousand dollars ask how much of that fundraising activity am I going to have to do to make that sort of money. So let's say you're um, selling sausages, doing a sausage sizzle, you want to raise $5,000, sausages to sell for $2 each, and let's say all everything was donated, all the um, goods and products and everyone's time. So let's say that you need to sell 2,500 sausages to raise $5,000 for a sausage sizzle. So it's like, is that possible and how much work is going to be involved in that to do that something like that? And then also you want to be monitoring your progress along the way to make sure that you um, are on track to be doing what you want to be doing with your fundraiser. Uh, must do number four, don't make it complicated and too much work for yourself. Uh, there's a lot of things out there that seem like a good idea and then they just suck all of your spare time and you don't want to be picking something like that. You've got a life to live. Um, fundraising is something that you want to do in addition to your life and not the only thing of your life. So find someone that's got the systems and the templates and the checklists already in place so that you can just um, use them. Uh, no point reinventing the wheel. Um, you want to be having a well-defined list of simple tasks that you get a step-by-step -step that you can work through to get things done. Um, and then that list is also really helpful for when you're needing people to, uh, people say, oh, let me know if you, I can help you. Then you can just simply go down your list of simple tasks and hand out those really easily. And lastly, you want to be surrounding yourself with a team of happy helpers because the more that you get some help, um, the less that you're going to do, the more people that are getting involved and the more fun experience it's going to be for you and everybody else involved.
And finally, milestone number five is to have a plan. So you want to be planning out the fundraiser. It's like, what are all the steps that I need to do to get to the end goal? So it's like, um, what do I have to prepare in advance? So do I need flyers? Do I need posters? How am I going to advertise this? Do I need order forms? That sort of thing. And then promoting the fundraiser. It's like, who am I going to promote this to? Am I going to promote it to uh, friends, family, co-workers, people at my school, people at my sporting club? those sorts of things like who is going to be promoting and who's going to be coming to that and then there's actually the producing of the fundraiser so like if it's sausage sizzles it's like getting the barbecue getting the bread getting the sausages getting the sauce uh, getting the cash tins all those sorts of things so it's like what do you actually have to do to produce that fundraiser and then have a think about what could go wrong and how that could be fixed because having a plan up front is going to be a lot help more helpful and a lot less stress for you so um that's pretty much it for this for the five step must do steps to consider the how to pick the right fundraiser if you have any questions or you want to find out more information about fundraising head to my website katebur.com.au and uh, there you can also join a link to get on some free online training as well that's it for me have a great day bye bye see you next time